The scene starts. You finally made it to the end of this cold and dreary dungeon. You have slain many monsters. Your hit dice are all used up. Your spell slots are empty. And your health is low. But ahead, hope. You see a wood chest. The chest slowly opens to reveal the treasure you have worked so hard to find. And it's another ring of warmth. Oh boy, oh boy. Now you have five. Now you got a full collection. And you're never going to get cold. I think many of us have this problem when we play D&D. You'll spend forever doing a dungeon. You'll find the chest. You open up that chest. And it's just an item that was either rolled randomly that none of you can use. Or an item you already have. Or just an item that is not that great. I think the real problem with D&D in this sense is that the modules and stuff will put in some good items, but it's kind of oversaturated with some of the lesser items, which is fine because those lesser items can be pretty good. But when you get to higher levels, you're going to want something a little more, a little more strong, you know? You want something with a little more of a kick to it than some, some ointment. I can't tell you how many times I've been so excited we finally beat the dungeon, there's a chest, I open the chest, and oh boy, it's another ointment, I'm never going to get sick again. The second thing that can happen is if you build a character like a sorcerer and you go through a dungeon, most likely you're going to find like a plus one sword or something and then the fighter's going to get his fifth plus one sword because they're freaking everywhere and there's never a good variety of magic items for all the characters. You know, especially for like, there's a lot of classes that really just kind of get screwed on magic items. Like, let's look at the rogue or the druid. I mean, I don't know. I just don't feel like there's a big variety for these classes. And it's not that these magic items don't exist. I just feel like it's that they're very rarely provided to players. The modules in D&D definitely don't provide a huge variety of magic items, though they do have some magic items in them. I know several of them you can get flame tongues and sun sword and stuff, which is fine. But I know all of you that own the DM's guide have looked through that bad boy and you've gone to the magic item page and you've looked through it and you've just been like, ooh, ah, oh, ooh, like a kid in a candy shop, you know, you've just kind of looked at all these items and you've seen how glorious some of them are, but you know you're never going to get any because the DM's not going to give an item that cool or another campaigner going to provide an item that awesome. So it's kind of a bittersweet thing. It's fun to look at them, but you know you're never going to get them. Some DMs can be really cool about giving magic items, but I think most of them try to maintain balance. And in order to maintain balance, they don't want to give you any powerful magic items. So they're fine giving you 20 things of ointment and 10 rings of warmth because they know that's not going to outbalance the game. But they're not going to give you a holy avenger or a vocal sword because they feel like if they give you that, then the challenges aren't going to be as hard. The problem with this, though, is that a lot of characters explore an adventure to find these items. And when they find them, such a good payoff to the characters. You know, the characters work hard. The characters, PCs, man, have to do a lot of dumb crap. They gotta talk to all these NPCs, they gotta explore these towns, find ruins, and all sorts of kill goblins and dumb stuff like that. They gotta do a lot of stuff, and a lot of that stuff is kind of boring and they don't like doing. So if you're gonna make them do that, you gotta give them a good payoff, you know? And gold is nice, but I'm sure any player would rather have a magic item than gold. Especially if you're gonna make them do some long thing they don't want to do, you gotta, you can't give them more ointment. It's not cool. There are a couple ways I think this can be fixed, or at least just made easier. The first way is just talk to the DM. Um, I'm a DM in my group, and I have lots of players come up to me and say, "Oh man, this magic item is great. It would be awesome if I found a, a belt of giant strength, and then my character could be really strong." So what I do, I go in my campaign, and I'll replace whatever item they're gonna find next with the item they request. And I don't do this all the time, you know. If they request the amulet of ultimate evil or something i'm probably not going to put that in there because yeah that would destroy the game but i think to some level we should cater the magic items to the players especially in the modules where the items are just kind of randomized i think it would be smart to pick out items to make sure all the characters get some that fit their characters and get some that they actually want some dms aren't going to be down with that some dms are going to be like oh don't tell me how to do my job i'm a dm i know what i'm talking about you shut up you know um and that's lame and it's sad, but a lot of DMs are going to be that way. But there is another option. In the DM's guide, there's a handy little table called Crafting Magic Items. Let me tell you a little secret. This table's freaking dumb. It costs 500 gold to create an uncommon item. This table's terrible. I mean, the sell price is 500 gold. And that's if you roll good. But that table doesn't really make much sense to me. But... In Xanathar's guide, they made another table for magic items, 
which is a little bit better. It kind of has the same table that's in the DM's guide, but it also adds the work weeks, which you could have calculated in the other one. But this one's better and easier. The cost, as you can see, is lessened, which is way smarter because it makes way more sense that it would cost 200 to make an uncommon, and then you could sell it for a profit. I mean, how else do people make money making magic items? This table makes a lot more sense to me. And what also makes a lot more sense is the magic item ingredients table. This suggests that in order to make that magic item, you need to get an ingredient from a monster with a certain challenge rating. I think this is a great idea, for several reasons. First of all, that gives players a whole nother reason to fight monsters, especially maybe monsters that are a little too tough for them. I know I started doing this role, and in several campaigns, I had players kind of seek after strong monsters just so they could start making magic items. There is one part about this table I don't really like. It kind of puts, puts it in the hands of the DM uh, by saying, well, the DM needs to put a monster with the ingredient, and the DM needs to make an adventure out of it. If every time you wanted to craft a magic item you had to have an adventure, you would never do it. It kind of destroys the whole purpose. Most of the time, you're already on an adventure, and the DM's not going to want to create a whole adventure just to make a cape of billowing. That makes no sense to me. So I would add some adjustments to these tables, first of all, and second of all, I would combine them. The Xanathar's table is pretty good, but it is missing one thing. The minimum level table. The minimum level table is super important because it wouldn't make sense for a level 3 character to come into a ton of money somehow beat a strong monster with the help of tons of NPCs, and then be able to craft, like, a legendary item, okay? That makes no sense. Anyways, that's it for now. Um, I will hopefully see you next Wednesday, and we will talk about something else. Thanks for watching.